We are still on our series Redefined. Actually, pang third week pa lang po natin of our 16-week series. And the reason why we wanted to have this series Redefined is because we want to look at the Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew chapter 5 all the way to Matthew chapter 7. At sa Sermon on the Mount po, parang binago ni, ni Jesus, not the law, no? Not the ways of God, but how we're supposed to look at the ways of God. Because the new kingdom has come, Jesus has ushered in the kingdom of heaven, and we, we have to realize that with kingdom thinking, then it results to kingdom living. That if God is king over our lives, then our lives should be lived according to his kingdom, according to his goodness and his faithfulness, according to his will. That if God is king, our lives will be lived differently. So ngayon, si Jesus, nag, nag-start na yung ministry niya, and then, bago, niya, bago pa niya inusad, bago pa niya kinuntinyo, pinag-usapan niya tong Sermon on the Mount. And we've looked at the first week that uh, the greatest blessing, the supreme blessing, Beatitudes, is not about the blessing externally. The blessing externally is great. Amen? I'm glad that you have a chair to sit in. I'm glad that we have air condition. Okay? I'm glad that you have homes to live in. You can pay tuition fee for your kids. I'm glad. Those are blessings. But the greatest one is the one that's bl- the blessing on the inside. Yun yung pinakita ng Beatitudes. Tapos, niredefine din ni Jesus pag sinabi niyang influence, ano yun? That we are salt and light. We are salt and light. We're supposed to go out there and influence, not be diluted. At ang kagandahan noon last week, no, yung manga. Iba? Alam niyo yung, well, hindi naman ako nagtampo. Ang tanong ko lang is, bakit pagkatapos ng service, wala man lang nag-offer sa akin ng manga? Diba? So, pero napansin nyo ba last week or sa buhay nyo, pag naglagay kayo ng salt, salt kasi is a flavoring, it enhances the flavor. Pero pag kumain ka ng pagkain na masarap, na alam mong nilagyan ng asin, hindi mo naman sinasabi na, mm, ang sarap ng asin. Ay, di sinasabi mo, masarap yung manga, masarap yung kung ano man ang lutong nilalagyan ng asin. Sorry, hindi pa ako nagluluto masyado. Okay, but, but I do boil water. Okay, so... <laughs> Right. So sinasabi, bakit kaya ganun? Because as the salt, minention to ni Pastor Brian, as the salt and light, it is not for our glory. It is for God's glory. Kaya pag salt ka, okay lang na hindi tinutuon yung pansin sa'yo. Kasi ang gusto mong ma- ma-enhance is the glory of God, not your glory. Ngayon naman, titingnan natin what Jesus says about the law. No? All kingdoms have their laws. And mapapansin natin mamaya that when Jesus talks about the law, nasa isip na kaagad ng mga, ano, ng mga audience niya is about acceptance, righteousness, salvation. Ganun yung nasa isip nila. Kasi ang law na yan, kaakibat sa religion. Pansin niyo mga lahat ng mga religion, meron silang kanya-kanyang law. At ang sabi ng mga kanya-kanyang religion, pag, gina- pag sinunod mo tong law na to, okay ka sa Diyos, or kung sino man ang Diyos na sinusundan nila. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open it to Matthew chapter 5. We'll be reading from verse 17 to 20. Matthew 5, verse 17 to 20. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm not gonna fla- flash the, ano, the, the verse. So hopefully get your gadgets and then sundan you rin po as I'm reading it. Matthew 5, verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom 
of heaven. Father, we thank you for your word. And we ask, Holy Spirit, open our eyes and our hearts, our minds to your truth. That we may see your grace that's already there. And receive your faith to walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to be looking at three things. Don sa sinabi ni Jesus. The law, obedience, and righteousness. Looking at the law, tayong mga tao, I- I'm sure hindi lang mga mga Pinoy to, pero as a human being, pag may, gina- pag may law na binigay sa'yo, regulation, rules, sa maaring sa bahay mo pa lang, sa school mo dati, elementary ka, high school, sa work mo ngayon, pansinin mo, and, well, not just, not just that, even sa bansa, sa city, no, mga ordinances, pansinin mo, it's either we tend to what? Bend the law? Circumnavigate the law? Ikutan yung batas? Di ba? Or minsan, tahasan, we break the law. Sana minsan lang, hindi po kadalasan. At, of course, when it suits us, we obey the law. Tama po ba? Kaya mapapansin mo, halimbawa, ikaw, nagdadive ka. Alam mo, red light na, tumawid ka pa rin. Alam mo, no right turn on red signal, pero kumanan ka. Mapapansin mo, meron kang self-preservation. Kaya pag kinawayan ka ng MMDA, akala mo, friendly lang. Kinakawayan mo rin. Aba, malay ko ba kung famous na ako? Diba? Malay ko kung kilala niya ako. Pero sa totoo lang, alam mo naman eh na, naku, mali ako dun ah. At alam mo may batas. ba? Alam mo may batas. Pero, Ang ginagawa natin, hopefully, minsan lang. Sana may mga times din na humihinto tayo. Okay? At binibigay natin ang lisensya natin. At pag sinabi ng, kung sino man ang huhuli, ngayon, if you're an MMDA, if you're a traffic enforcer, this is not you. Okay? This is not you. I'm sure this is not you. Kasi minsan may mga nang huhuli na, oh, sir, paano ba yan? Alam mo, sir, matagal kunin to. Diba? Ako hassle sa YouTube sir. So nagbibigay na yan ng tip na maglagay ka. Hopefully, hindi ka naglalagay. Okay, hopefully. Pero pansinin mo, ganun tayo sa pagdating sa law. Tingin natin, kaya nating lusutan. Bata ka pa lang, nilulusutan mo na. High school ka. As a matter of fact, pag nalusutan natin, pag when we break the law, there are times that we don't even feel remorseful or sorry to break it. We're still proud. Paalam ako. Ba? Sabi ko kay mami at kay daddy, magbabible study tayo, hindi niya alam, nanood lang tayo ng Spider-Man. Di ba? Pansin niyo? No high school ka, no, ano? Ngayon nag-work ka na, paano mo binibend yung law? Ilang minutes ba yung break time? Coffee break? Supposedly, 15 minutes. Pero ang sabi natin, for example, yung coffee break nyo starts at 10. 9.50 pa lang. Ano ba naman yung 10 minutes? Ma- Tagal ko na dito sa kumpanya, ang dami ko nang naibigay. Well, minsan, nag-uwi rin ako ng paperclip, pero manas marami akong naibibigay talaga. Diba? Ganun tayo. Ganun tayo when it comes to the law. Eto pa. Binigyan niya, binigyan niya nga tayo, because of our propensity, say, say for example, pag nag-uwi ka ng paperclip, ng bond paper, mm, ng refrigerator or ng printer ng opisina. Anong tawag natin dyan? Pani pag sinabi sa'yo, ay alam mo, nagnanakaw ka. Ay hindi pag nanakaw yan, pilfering lang yan. Pinaganda pa natin ang wordings. But the point is this, people have the propensity to cast the law aside. Nung time na nagsasabi si Jesus sa mga audience niya, the Jews have 613 rules. 613 rules and regulations, laws about their civil, ceremonial, and moral law. At sa paningin nila, para maging okay ako kay God, kailangan maggawa ko lahat yun. 613. Paano kaya sa bahay mo? May 100 laws. Lima pa nga lang minsan, hirap na tayo. So what Jesus is saying here is that, guys, these laws, guess what? I am the fulfillment of this law. 
All these laws point to me. He is the culmination, the goal, the end of the law. Now, when the Bible says end, it doesn't mean natapos na at hindi mo na kailangan gawin. Mamaya, titingnan natin. Jesus perfected or fulfilled the moral law. He was sinless. He obeyed God without, ano, with, with walang palya. Not only that, He fulfilled the civil law. The civil law kasi was placed so that tayo, la, tayo, or yung mga Jews at that time, they will relate right to each other. Walang gulangan. Ganon. So if I owe you something, I'll pay it. Yung ganon. Pag nagkasala ka sa, ako, ka sa akin, I'll forgive you. Diba? Civil law. Jesus also fulfilled that because every time He interacts with people, it's really not for His own good, but it's for the good of the people. His actions. As a matter of fact, when they were nailing Him in the cross, ano sabi niya? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's why Jesus said, do not think that I have come to abolish, to do away with it. To abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. I have not come to destroy them, to make them, um, ano na, yung baliwala na. I have come to fulfill to complete, to satisfy the law. Why? Because Jesus fulfilled what we cannot fulfill. Huwag ka nang pumunta sa, sa laws ni God. Yung law mo pa lang, sa sarili mo, hindi mo mga ma-fulfill. Sino sa inyo dito? Alam niyo yung importanteng mag-exercise. Walang nakakaalam. <laughs> Lahat tayo ignorante. May importante mo, anong exercise? Ano yun? <laughs> Di ba? Ilan na sa inyo nagsabi sa sarili nyo, kailangan kong mag-exercise. Didisiplinahin ko ang sarili kong mag-exercise. Ilan na? Di ba? Kung yayaman lang tayo sa bawat salita natin noon, bilyonaryo na tayo. Okay? Even our own. Ito. Tayo nga eh. Alam nating, di ba? Mali ang mag-chismis. But but natin alam kasi pag chinismis ka hindi mo naman sinabi huy mari chinismis mo ako Ay, ang bait mo talagang kaibigan <laughs> di ba hindi pero tayo nagchichismis tayo ilan sa atin alam na mali ang magsinungaling but mo alam kasi pag nagsinungaling sa iyo yung tao you don't feel good pero ikaw oh, sige wag na ikaw ako nagsisinungaling ako paminsan-minsan. Bakit? Out of fear, convenience, ganun, di ba? Ganun tayo. And Jesus is saying, you cannot fulfill the law. Even what you think is only basic, hindi mo nga magagawa to the letter perfectly. That's why Jesus fulfilled it for us. Paul said this, Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes to fulfill them. There might be righteousness. He is the culmination. He is the end. He is the goal. He is the one who satisfies the law. Kaya nga sabi niya, it is finished. Pero eto ngayon ang tanong natin. If it is finished, meron pa ba tayong kailangan gawin? If you already satisfied it, does that mean we're off the hook? Pwede na ba tayong mag-disobey? So ngayon, kinuntin ni Jesus. We've looked at the law that Jesus said, Hey, everything, your scripture. Remember, he was talking to the Jews. Yung scripture points to me. I am the culmination. I am the end. I am the goal. And without me, Everything that you do is futile. I'm the one who fulfilled it. But now that I fulfilled it, paano naman yung area ng obedience natin? Does that mean because ginawa mo na para sa akin, Jesus, hindi ko na gagawin? Saan pumapasok yung obedience? Kasi minsan, may mga, may mga taong medyo iba mag-isip. Because I'm saved by grace, I don't have to obey the law anymore. Because... The Bible says this, there is righteousness apart from the law. 
Saan papasok yung obedience natin? First thing we need to understand is that Jesus is serious in upholding the law. The very person who can bend, who can break, who can do away with the law, siya pa yung nagsasabing, no, the law is good, the law is important. Bakit kaya siya may right to break the law? Because he made it. Wala ka namang magagawa kung papalitan ni God yung law, di ba? But he doesn't change it. He has come to fulfill it. Truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And at this time, starting from this time, maririnig nyo, I hope you read Matthew 5 all the way to verse chapter 7 with us. At mapapansin nyo, Jesus would always say this verse, Truly I say, now tayo, ilagay natin ang place natin sa mga nakikinig sa kanya. Na ang parati natin nakikinig, narinig sa ating mga rabbi or mga pastor or no, is this, scripture says this, God says this, but here comes a rabbi, a teacher, who says, I say to you. Bakit? Because there's weight in what he is saying because he is God. Kung may tao magsabi sa yun, uy, alam mo, Sabi daw, ganito daw dapat na gawin natin. Anong sunod na tanong mo? Sino ang nagsabi? Because if you know kung sino nagsabi, doon mo mawiwi kung hmm, totoo ba to o hindi. ba? Pero yun yung sinasabi ni Jesus. Dahil sinabi ko. Kaya nagkaroon siya ng premise, I have not come to abolish but to fulfill. Because there will be things that he will say that will redefine the minds of people. You have heard it said, do not murder, but I say to you. You have heard it said, do not commit adultery, but I say to you. Ganun siya. So this phrase is very important. Because this is the time that Jesus is saying, my authority is greater than the authority of anyone else in the world. As a matter of fact, my, his authority is at par with the authority of Scripture. Yan yung sinasabi niya. The law will stand. The law is important. So much so that he said, therefore, whoever relaxes. How many of us, we love to relax the law? Para lang sa kanila yan. Diba? Sa atin, ibahin mo tayo. Okay? Kahit yung mga simpleng law lang. Okay. Nagda-drive ka. Papasok ka sa isang village. Dalawang nakalagay dyan. With sticker, without sticker. Wala kang sticker. Pero dahil pag nag-without sticker ka, mag ka pa ng kung ano-ano, para lang yan sa mga hindi ka... What's trustworthy? Ka-trustworthy, trustworthy. Para lang dun yun. So ikaw, nagda-drive ka, alam mo, wala kang sticker. Pero saan ka pupunta? With sticker. Baka maka... We tend to relax. But here's what Jesus said, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven and whoever does them and teaches them. You and I are called to teach each other. will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus takes obedience very, 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 very seriously. Now here's the thing about obedience. Obedience does not save you. The law does not save you. Sabi ni Jesus, ako yun, ako yung fulfillment. But if the law doesn't save us, then why do we have to do it? Why do we have to obey? Diba? Obedience does not give you life, but it leads you to a place, an avenue, a point wherein you partake of that life. Jesus already saved you. Jesus has already given you life. But if you want to enjoy that relationship with Him, obedience is the way. Parang ganito lang yan. Maliit pa tayo, tinuruan na tayong magsubo. Paano maghawak ng, ping, ng pinggan? <laughs> ng plat? Ng plato. <laughs> ng kubiertos, okay? Tapos, okay, ganito ka magsubo. Every time ka bang magsubo, may nag appear na pagkain sa... Well, subukan natin. I need your cooperation. In the count of three, magsubo tayo. Okay? Sige. One, two, three, go. 
May pagkain ba? Wala. Yan ang obedience. It's like pagsubo. <laughs> pagsubo. Anyway, it's like subo. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, yung act ng pagsubo, hindi nagpo-produce ng pagkain. Pero pag may pagkain na dyan, yung act of subuising <laughs> makes you partake of the food and taste the food and enjoy the food. Kanina nagpatayo ako may mga families dito na medyo marami-rami. Okay? So, dyan kanina medyo may mga apat limang nakatayo dyan kanina. Okay? Sino yung family dito kanina na medyo lima kayo? Lima kayo dito. Dito? Dito ba? So parang sabi mo, mali ako, doon ko nakita. <laughs> nee, sige, tayo po kayo, tayo po kayo. Okay, tayo kayo. Okay, so this family, wala namang allergic sa, uh, sa inyo sa Ferrero. Wala namang. Okay. Sige. So, sige, subo kayo, subo. Na-enjoy nyo ba yung Ferrero? Hin- na-enjoy nyo? Wow. Wala pa sa'yo, na-enjoy mo na. Okay, ayan, okay. So, Get, uy, wag mo muna ang buksan sa'yo. <laughs> Nagmamadali si Papa. Okay. Okay, so now, wag niyo muna isubo. Masarap ba? It's like, nat- natitikman niyo ba yung sarap ng Ferrero? Yung crunchiness, like the chocolate and those nuts there. And like, you know, that inside that it's like a melted thing. Do you taste it? No, because you're not eating it. Ngayon po, isubo niyo. Isubo niyo. Buti naman, may wisdom silang balatan muna. Wow, ha? Na-enjoy nyo na ba yung sarap? Great, thank you so much. That's obedience. Obedience will not make you alive. God is the one who's going to make you alive. But if you want to partake of that life, if you want to enjoy that relationship with God, obedience is the way. Now, here's the thing. For some of us, may mga drama yung mga Kristiyano na ganito. Nag-church naman ako. Niniwala naman ako kay God. Pero there's something missing in my life. Huh? Parang may kulang. Hanapin mo sa relationship, sa career. Parang may kulang pa rin. Diba? Could it be that obedience is the missing thing? Could it be that the reason why you feel like I'm Christian but I don't feel like I'm fulfilled is because obedience is missing. Could it be lang? I'm just asking, throwing that question. Because for some of us here, we, we think that if only I have this job, if only I have this family, if only I have this man, this woman, if only I have these blessings, but could it be that it's obedience that's missing? Heart check po sa ating lahat. Don't be afraid to obey God. Don't be afraid. If you are a young woman, you have a boyfriend who looks like a Christian, who's maybe a Christian, and tells you, you know what, I love you so much, that let's do something. Feel free to say no. Feel free to obey God and say no. Baka mawala siya sa buhay mo, nandyan pa rin si God. That man is not your savior. That man can probably give you something that you think you want, but it will not fully satisfy your spirit or your soul. Could it be that for some of us, sabi ni God, tigilan mo na yung pagsusugal mo, anak. Tigilan mo na yung pangangaliwa mo. Tigilan mo na yung pride mo na nasumisira sa relationship mo sa family mo. Could it be na sinasabi sa atin ni God? Tigilan mo na yung unforgiveness. And we feel like that when we obey, para ang hirap sa atin, parang lugi tayo. God is saying, I have given you life. And I want you to partake of that life. And obedience is the way. So, kinlaro ni Jesus. I fulfilled the law, but I'm serious about obedience. So, ngayon, meron pa siyang isang kaklaruhin. Kasi ang tingin ng mga tao nun, ah, 
para ma-accept ako ni God, kailangan ko mag-obey. That's why he talked about righteousness. Because the typical Jews at that time, or probably us, grew, growing up in a religious culture, we think that good behavior equals acceptance by God. Right? Because it seems like, I mean, that's logical. It seems like that's how it goes. But see, the law cannot save you, but the law can point you to the Savior. That's why Jesus said, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is, kung ikaw Jew dati at marinig mo yan, it's, it's a windangacious statement. It's like, what? Huh? Ano daw? Anyare, ganun siya. Ay, sandali lang. Kaya nga tayo, nag, iba yung scribes, yung Pharisees, sila yung model, example natin for righteousness. Nasusunod nila. Alam mo ba yung mga scribes, pag nag-harvest sila ng mga beans, binibilang nila yan. Bakit? Tithe eh. Kailangan 10%, 10% nun. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, di ba, yung deals, yung cumin nyo, binibilang nyo diligently para yung law matupad nyo. But here's what Jesus is saying. Your actions, your good deeds will never, ever, ever, ever be at par with what God, with what God is calling us to be in righteousness. Ganun. It will never be at par with that. Yung good works, yung giving to the poor, giving, going here, good works, praying, it will never lead you or give you righteousness. So, kinlaro ni Jesus kasi una, I fulfilled the law. So, does the law matter? Yes. So, if the law matters, that means it's the way to righteousness, to salvation. No. It's the way for you to enjoy the relationship. Because salvation is totally, totally different. Jesus did not just come to install or establish a new religion. That's not it. Because if it's a new religion, there, there will be different laws, different ways. But Jesus is saying, no, the law stands firm. But the way to righteousness, to salvation, it's not through the law. Because even the Pharisees that you think are perfect falls short of the standard of God. So, inangat ngayon ni Jesus yung ano? Yung way to salvation. The law then, anong, anong point ng law? The law was created not so that we can, you know, prove to God that we're good. No one is good enough. But the law was created like a mirror. Paul said this, For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So the law is like a mirror to show us that we are I don't know kung mag-agree kayo sa akin, that we are wicked, we are sinful, we are evil, we are unrighteous. It's not the law that saves you. The law simply tells you you need a Savior. Parang sa umaga, pag tingin mo sa mirror, halimbawa, may muta, medyo crass, sorry for the word, halimbawa, you have muta, Okay, and you, you saw in the mirror. Do you get the mirror to get your muta? Or do you clean the mirror, trying to change the mirror as we try to change the law or change? Do we do that? No, you change. But in this case, you have no power to change yourself. It shows you what's wrong but the law is powerless to change you or save you. Even the best of us. That's why Isaiah, when he encountered God, I mean, Isaiah was already righteous by the standards of Jerusalem. Okay? He was God-fearing already. But when he encountered God, ito yung sabi niya. Sabi niya, woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, I am doomed, I am lost. I am destroyed, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. But because nakita ni Isaiah sa presence ni God, yung konting kasalanan niya, 
yung ginagawa natin na konti lang naman ang kasalanan. Hindi naman major, hindi naman life and death. One, one time I was watching a movie in the computer, in the internet, and my son came and he said, can I borrow your computer? And I said, I'm watching a movie. And he said, what are you watching? And I told him the movie. And he said, okay. Sabi niya, bago yan ah. Bagong movie. Tapos next thing he said, that's piracy. Okay, now. Anak. Okay, I try to defend myself. <laughs> piracy is like you go to the movie house and you, you like, you know, thing like, that's piracy. This one, it just happens it's there. <laughs> Ifa? So I could actually defend myself to my son. Now, no, this is, I'm, this is not a crime. This is not a sin. But when I get before God, how many of you know I cannot defend myself? Because now the standards, the righteousness of God, and I see my wickedness, even in the small things. Even in the small things. Kaya sabi ni Isaiah, I am ruined. Ano ba yung... I am a man of unclean lips. Wow, baka nagmura siya. Eh, ilan sa atin dito? Nagmumura din paminsan-minsan. At maaari, hindi ako nagmumura, ha? O, pero tinatawag mo naman yung anak mong demonyo. At yung asawa mong hudas. <laughs> Di ba? Ganon din yun. Tarang. So, maliit lang. Pero nakita ni Isaiah, never, never, I will never pass. Ang kagandahan naman sa nangyari kay Isa is because he was ruined in the presence of God. He was ruined in the presence of God. Here's what happened. The angel took a coal and then touched his mouth. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. Guys, the best place to ruin your life, if I may use that term, is in the presence of God. The best place to be broken, to be hopeless, to be helpless, is in the presence of God. Because instead of condemnation, you will receive mercy. Instead of judgment, you receive redemption. You receive forgiveness. You receive compassion. You receive life in the presence of God. Some of us, our lives are being ruined not just our lives, our marriages are being ruined because of our unfaithfulness. Some of us, our relationships are being ruined because of our pride, because of our envy, our unforgiveness. God is saying the best place to ruin your life, if you really want that, is in His presence because that's where you will find life. So don't be afraid to obey. Don't be afraid to say no to your pornography, your fornication, your adultery, your homosexuality, your homosexual tendency, your activities. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do it God's way. Because when God came, Jesus came, he did not establish a new religion. He established a new relationship so that your obedience will not be based on duty, but it's based on love. That's why he said, if you love me, relational, you will keep my commandments. You love Jesus? It's in that relationship that there is the power to obey. It's in that relationship that there is the joy to obey. Because in the presence of God, the dead become alive. The slave becomes a child. The duty becomes a choice. The burden becomes a joy. There's no better place to be ruined but in the presence of God. Jesus talked about the law. Jesus talked about obedience. Jesus talked about righteousness. Obedience then is not primarily for, to, for us to be saved. It's not primarily a duty, but it is about relationship. All of us have a duty. We need to, we're expected by God to obey the law. 
but it's in the relationship that the power comes to do it. Amen? And I feel like there are some of us here that you need to hear that. Don't be afraid to obey. Some of us, complicado na yung mga sitwasyon, don't be afraid to obey. Nothing is impossible for God. God can fix that. Some of us, naglilive in tayo, don't be afraid. Pakasal kayo. Hindi ako pwede, magpaka- hindi pwede magpakasal, komplikado, mag-usap tayo. Let's find help. But please, the life that you're looking for, it's in Christ. It's not in your gambling, it's not in your addiction. It's in Jesus. Amen? Because Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. All of you are righteous in Christ, but you will only enjoy that righteousness, enjoy the relationship, and the path is obedience. Why don't we all stand? You know, as we're going through this redefined series, I pray that you'd allow God to redefine how you see things. I pray that children will continue to honor their parents. I pray that we'll continue to seek God and know God and glorify God. Every month in Victory, we do what we call a communion. And today, we're going to partake of communion. If you are here, it's your first time, you come from another church and you feel like, I don't want to join, it's okay. Everybody say, it's okay. okay. Okay, If you don't want to join communion with us, it's okay. You are not a trying hard copycat human being, okay? God loves you. But if you you consider victory as your local church, join us. Join this spiritual community, this spiritual family. We want to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. We want to remember. And we want to be redefined. Before I do that, I just want to make a call. As I was preaching a while ago, for some of us here, alam natin tinatawag na tayo ni God to obey. To surrender our lives to Jesus. And if that's you, can you raise your hand? I just want to pray with you. You want to surrender your life to God. You want to trust Him with your salvation, not just for eternity, but here on earth. Keep those hands raised. Lord, thank You that this is the time for us to be ruined, and it's the best place to know that we are helpless, hopeless, to know that we cannot save ourselves. But we put our faith and trust in You, Jesus, that You have fulfilled the law, that we are forgiven, And there is a new hope and a new life for us. God, as we lift up our hearts, God, may we hear from you. Welcome, my child. I love you. You are blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. As we partake of communion, know that this is this is God's God is the one who instituted this. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed or delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, He took the cup and after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. And in the New Testament, in the writings of the apostles, when you say the Lord's death, that includes His life, His death, and His resurrection. And I want us to be reminded that we are blessed. We are redeemed. We are strengthened. We have a God who loves us who's compassionate and mercy, slow to anger. We have a God who loves the best for us. Sabi nga ng isang kakilala ko, lugi pa ba tayo doon? 
Father, we thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And he lived again so that our forgiveness is sure and true. Thank you for the body that was broken on the cross. Thank you for the hope that never fails. In Jesus' name, let's partake of the bread. Lord, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. You said in your word that by the stripes of Christ we are healed, that by his blood we are covered, we are cleansed. Our shame is put away. Our guilt is put away. Lord, we ask that we would always hear your voice in the midst of the noise of anxiety and helplessness and fear and worries. In the midst of the noise of sin, we will always hear your voice and step out in faith to obey. We thank you, God, for our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the cup. I want to pray for, for us here. You know, you are, you know, God's calling you to repent. I just want to take this time for us to surrender, to humble ourselves before God and say, God, that's me. I need to repent. If that's you, can you raise your hand? There is no shame. There is forgiveness. And there is strength and mercy. Bless your people, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God bless us with humility. In the name of Jesus, bless us with faith, hope, love. In the name of Jesus, bless us with righteousness. Thank you for the blessing of repentance. Thank you that there is greatness in you. And there is greatness in our walk with you, in our lives. Thank you that sin, anxiety, fear will not be our lives. It will be joy and peace and amazing goodness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.